Hey coders, Chris here. For those of you guys who celebrated, I hope you had a great holiday weekend. Today, I'm going to tell you about this library called Swifty JSON. So as you've witnessed in the building of the YouTube video app and the shopping app, a lot of the time when you're doing networking in your app, making API requests, parsing responses and stuff like that, most of the time it's in JSON. And using this library makes it a little more convenient and provides some error handling as well. So under the usage section here, there is a couple of use cases where Swifty JSON makes things easier. Here are some examples. When you have a JSON dictionary and you pass in this key expecting a string, you're going to have to cast that result using the as keyword as a string. And here you can just go dot string value. Another thing is that often in JSON responses, you have a whole bunch of nested data structures. So you might have a value that is an array, which contains a dictionary, which has a value, which is another dictionary and so on and so forth. So for example, if we take a look at our shopping app, one of the responses we worked with was something like this when we retrieved all of our products. So take a look at this. The key is result and the value is an array. So each item in the array is a dictionary of values. And then if we look at the pricing key, its value is another dictionary. And then inside that dictionary, there's a rounded key, which is another dictionary. So you can see that it's several layers deep. And so subscripting like this, you can very easily drill down to the value that you want. There are also more benefits that I'm going to scroll over. You can take a look at all of them yourselves, but I'm going to go through another one, which I really like here. So error handling, if you're not using the library and you try to specify an array index that is out of bounds, your app is going to crash. Similarly, if you try to access a key in a dictionary and it doesn't exist, you're going to get a crash as well. So with Swifty JSON, it's not going to crash your app. Instead, it's going to give you a nice error message. Another cool thing about this library is that it plays very nicely with Alamo Fire, which we went over a couple days ago. So you can use Alamo Fire to make the request to retrieve the data. And when it comes back, assuming that it's JSON data, you can use Swifty JSON to work with the result. In fact, down here, if we scroll down, there's a section about how we can use Swifty JSON with Alamo's JSON response handler. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the project which we created when we looked at Alamo Fire a couple of days ago. And I'm going to just modify the completion handler to use Swifty JSON to work with the result. So just to refresh your memory, what we were doing here in this project, I had a JSON file at this URL. So let me show you what that looks like. It's just a simple dictionary with two keys. One of the values is a string. Another value is an array with three strings inside. So we were using Alamo Fire to retrieve this JSON file. And then inside the result, we're just displaying the first key and the second key as an array. OK, so let's close this project and let's install the Swifty JSON pod. So we're going to scroll up to the top and we're going to go to usage or actually integration and follow this CocoaPods installation for Swifty JSON. Because we already have our pod file, let me just go to our project here, we have sample. So we already have a pod file and we have our XC workspace because we installed Alamo Fire, right? All you need to do is open up your pod file in your text editor. So you can see here, we already have the Alamo Fire and we can just add another line under that. So we're gonna do that. OK, now we're going to save it and we're going to open up Terminal. Now, if all this is new to you, check out the video where we talk about CocoaPods and how to use it. And also watch the video where we talked about Alamo Fire. So we're going to navigate to that folder, our project folder. So right here, I'm on my home folder. I'm going to go to desktop slash AF sample. And in here, I want to run the command pod install again. Now, there's another command called pod update. Now, what's the difference? There's a good post here that talks about it. So pod install is to be used every time you edit your pod file to add a new pod to it or remove from it. OK, and pod update, you can run pod update with some specific pod name and it's going to get the latest version of that library. Or if you just run pod update without any name, it's just going to grab the latest version of all the libraries listed in your pod file. So because we're adding a new pod, we're going to type in pod install. So wait for it to do its thing. Okay, and now as you can see, it's got 
Swifty JSON and installed it. Now we can go back into our project folder and open up XC Workspace. Up here, we have to import the new library. It may not recognize it, so you're going to have to press Command B to build the project. Okay, so now let's go back to the Swifty JSON and look at the usage. And you can see here that in this example, they're also using Alamo Fire to fire off a request. They're calling the JSON response handler and they're using this conditional binding to grab the response.result.value and then they're passing that value into the Swifty JSON initializer. So I guess I glossed over this part, but let me just scroll back up and show you guys what I mean. So in order to initialize a new Swifty JSON object, you import it, which we've done, and then you can just call JSON and you can pass in data, you can pass in a JSON object, you can even pass in a JSON string. Okay, so that's the, that's the keyword, that's the class name that we're gonna have to use. So we go back all the way down here. We're grabbing the response.result.value. Okay, we're testing using conditional binding to see if it's nil or not. And if it's not nil, we're going to create a new Swifty JSON object like that. And then we're going to work with that guy right there. So going back into our Xcode project, we're already doing a lot of that, right? We're using Alamo Fire to fire off the request. We're using the JSON response method. And in here, we are already using optional binding to check the response.result.value. Uh, right here, we've chosen our constant name to be JSON. That's a little confusing, so let's call it value like they did. And in here, we would say let JSON equals JSON, and we'll pass in the value like that. So now, in here, in this JSON constant, we can use Swifty JSON to output this stuff. So instead of that, we can go something like this. See, instead of first key, and then we have to cast it as a string, we're going to go as we're going to go string value like that. And this one as an array, we can actually do array value. So let's try to run it and print those out in the console. Okay, so in the console, you can see that it's printed out the value of the first key and it's printed out the items in the array in the second key. Now, let me show you a couple of other things. So if I try to get a third key, because in my JSON file, there is no third key, right? And we run it, it's not gonna crash our app, but if I did this without using Swifty JSON, it would actually crash the whole app. So here, you can see that it didn't print anything because it didn't find a third key. And another thing is that this second key is an array, right? You can see it's an array with three items. I can use that subscripting and go like that to grab the second item in the array, right? Remember that the first item is at zero, second item is at one, and third item is at three. So there, see, I can grab the item number two, that's right there, just by writing this. So if you're doing a lot of networking in your app and you're working with a lot of JSON, I highly recommend that you use Swifty JSON. It just, it'll make your life easier and it plays really nicely with Alamo Fire, which is another popular library. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Thank you for watching as always and don't forget to subscribe and like and share the video. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye for now.